Hello, it's Sean. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen some of the different projects that I've been working on. Uh, somebody asked me about going over some of the basic techniques. I guess I just assumed that people had an idea about some of that and maybe that was a wrong assumption. So, um, I just thought I would put together a video that kind of went over the real basic stuff for painting six millimeter models. So first up, these are some models from uh, GHQ. Uh, these are M1A2 Abrams tanks and they're going to be the subject uh, for this video. To start with, you got to pick out your colors. I'm using Vallejo's model color US dark green is my base coat for these tanks. Uh, they were primed with a white primer and I use uh, an automotive primer. I get it at my local parts store. It's uh, relatively inexpensive but it works pretty well. Um, you can buy expensive primers um, but I don't think you really need them. You just need a, that coat that's uh, stuck to the metal and it a primer is important because if you just start painting on the metal if you were to take your finger and rub on this the paint would rub right off um, but you can see I can rub on here pretty hard and that paints not coming off because it's the primer uh, has some etching substance in it and it uh, holds to the surface very well then it gives you a nice solid base to put your paints on. So putting down that base coat, you want to thin down your paint a little bit. I use a wet palette and this has just got a sponge and kind of a piece of parchment paper. Um, I bought this one from uh, P3, it's a wet palette. It's not super expensive, but you can make one yourself. Um, you can make one yourself pretty easy. I used to use one that was homemade. I just took a sandwich, a plastic sandwich tray, cut it down so it was shallow. I'd put a piece of uh, paper towel on the bottom of it and then a piece of uh, parchment paper on top of that to put my, my paint on. And this kind of automatically thins the paint a little bit. So when you dab a couple of uh, drops of paint on there, there's moisture in the sponge that seeps through the um, the parchment paper so that it keeps your paint nice and thin doesn't dry out on you and it gives you a nice smooth coat on the model uh, you want to have a uh, thin paint for painting all this so that you don't block out the detail because if your paint gets thick as you're brushing it on it kind of clumps up in the the details of the model and you can lose some of that detail um, so it's better to have a couple of thin coats than it is one thick coat. Um, I'll do at least two coats on this. I'm going to wash these so I'm not as concerned about a real solid coat of color. I want it to be pretty consistent, but if there's a couple of spots that aren't, uh, uh, aren't totally nice and even, um, the wash will cover that up a little bit. So let me get painting on these and you can kind of see how they look and then I'll talk about the next step. All right, so you can kind of see with this I thin the paint down but you can see it's not a very consistent coat on here uh, but it's a nice thin coat so the detail is all uh, still easily recognizable so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna go back and put another coat on top of it and then we'll be able to see that uh, what the what difference that makes uh, after I put that second coat on
All right, so here you can see this body and turret has just one coat of uh, the US dark green wash. It's a thin coat, so you can see through it. It doesn't totally cover, um, but a second thin coat, and it covers much better. You can go ahead and do a thin, a third thin coat if you want, but I don't think it's really that necessary. Uh, if you're not going to wash them, you might want to do it, but uh, because I'm going to wash these, I'm not going to bother with that another coat. And I mean, you can see it gives a good coverage with two coats. Um, the model has a nice, pretty consistent color to it, and the white is all covered. So uh, ultimately what you want is a good solid base color on the model uh, before you do the wash. So, so next up I'm going to do a wash. Uh, I use for, for the US models uh, Games Workshop Agrex Earthshade. What this is, uh, I don't know if you can really see it in the bottle, it's a... a uh, a much thinner, uh, let's, um, maybe the consistency of milk is a better way to say it. Uh, it's, I'm not a professional artist or anything, so I may be describing it wrong, but essentially, uh, it has a lot of pigment, but it's not evenly distributed in the, the liquid. So when you put it on the model, that pigment is going to flow into the crevices and uh, put some shading on the model um, so that the, the recesses of the model uh, are darker than what the, the raised parts of the model are. So let me apply uh, the shade here and you can kind of see what I mean. Now this is just a stick with some sticky tack on it, ticky tack blue tack, whatever you want to call it. Um, these are handy for holding models that way you're not holding it in your hand. So I'm just going to stick this on here and then I can wash the whole model without having to worry about touching it. And then I have this. It's got holes in it that uh, uh, holds the model to dry. It's just a piece of pink foam that I've put holes in. So you can see here, I've applied the Agrex Earthshade wash to this body and turret. Uh, this body and turret are not washed. So you can see that it darkens up the color quite a bit and gives it a little bit more depth to the model. Uh, the dark gets into the crevices a little bit. Uh, and it just really uh, adds a, a level of uh, detail to the model that isn't there with only the, the paint color on it. Uh, some people will stop here. I'm actually going to apply a dry brush to this so you can see another level of detail. So what a dry brush is, is you take, uh, I'm going to take this US dark green that I've been painting, uh, I did the base color with, and I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. So that it thins it out a little bit and I'm gonna take and dry brush over the model um, with that so it put some highlights on all the the raised pieces the the dark recessed pieces will stay d dark um, the recessed areas will stay dark but the the raised points will get a little bit brighter color on them 
Uh, there's plenty of videos, I'm sure, if you look it up on YouTube, that will give you a real uh, specific description of dry brushing. So I'll give a real basic one. Um, what you do is, once I've got my color mixed, I'm going to put some paint on my brush, get it on there, and then I'm going to brush most of it off so that there's not a lot left on the brush, not a lot of uh, paint on the brush, hence dry brush. Uh, and then when you, you take it over the model, you're just scraping the little bit of paint onto those raised areas and um, really essentially, uh, essentially you are just uh, accenting the model. I'm only going to do a single dry brush. Some people will do several different lighter shades of dry brushes um, and then they'll highlight it too. But for my purposes for these models, I think a single um, dry brush is is good and that's what I'm going to do here. So when I'm mixing my colors, I just do a little dab of white. I don't mix them together immediately. That way I have a little bit better control over the color. So I'm going to take and just dab a little white and stick it in this color and mix it up. And that's still a little bit dark, so I'm going to get a little bit more. Add that in. And you want it to be a pretty consistent color, so make sure you mix it up good or well. And then get some paint on your brush and then brush it off. Some people will do this on a paper towel to get a lot off. Uh, and there you can see that side versus that side. It's easier to see in person, but I still think it's hopefully noticeable on here. And I am going to kind of avoid the tracks with my dry brushing because I want them to stay kind of dark. And then some people will paint the tracks. I, for this scale, I'm just leaving uh, the tracks with the green. Because once they're based, you really, they're not that noticeable. I think it's good to dry brush in a couple different directions. And that's kind of depending on the model you're doing, but you want to get the raised areas um, all over, so sometimes that direction matters. So it really does help the details show a little bit better. And that versus this, which doesn't have a wash. So I think it looks better. Uh, and again, maybe it's hard to see on the camera, but. And there we go. That is a painted, let's see if we can get it in focus, sorry, painted M1A2 
Abrams tank. And I think the results are pretty nice. I'm going to glue the turret down because I don't, I'm not going to bother changing the facing of the turret and the scale. And I think that it's too easy to lose turrets when they're not attached. So I will be gluing my turrets down. And that's a preference thing, so whatever you like to do. So I want to talk for a minute about bases. There's discussion amongst people about whether or not you should base these models uh, or leave them unbased. Uh, various reasons. One, if they are based, then you're worried about how they blend in with the terrain on the table. Um, other reasons as well. I'm choosing to base mine. Um, I like the way they look when they're based. It kind of gives an army a, a unified feel. Um, and with modern troops, because they're painted all very similarly, that's less of a concern. Uh, some of my sci-fi armies, you have units that look very different. Uh, so basing uh, all the models consistently uh, helps them to tie into one another so that they look like they belong in the same force. Uh, additionally, I want to base them because it's going to protect the barrel a little bit. So if you look here, the way I'm going to base these is that barrel is going to be back so that the whole base is uh, around, or the barrel doesn't protrude over the base. Um, that'll help to protect the barrel. These are still pretty... Um, I don't want to say weak, but they're very thin barrels. So if somebody grabs these by the barrel, they're going to bend. And that's just the way it is. So, um, but I like the way they look. What I use are these metal bases. I get them from wargameaccessories.com. Um, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just like using their bases. Um, it's a metal base, so it helps for you. If you want to use magnetic storage, it works well. Uh, and I do that for, for the scale. Uh, I talked about how I do the bases in a previous video, and I'll link that down in the notes. Um, essentially, I paint it, paint the base brown with a can of spray paint. I used watered down uh, wood glue, spread it over the base, sprinkle on a couple different colors of flock, um, let that dry, and once that dry, I go back with the very thin down uh, white glue, a PVA glue, and put it over the top so it's nice and sturdy. This is a uh, pretty solid. You're not going to take that off very easily. It looks nice. It gives a little bit of variation for ground color, um, I think. So once I've got the base done and it's dry, I just super glue the, the vehicle to the base and that's that. It's pretty straightforward. A little bit of paint on each track, not paint, a little bit of glue on each track. The tank how you want it. And you can put these square, kind of centered. You can put them at an angle if you want. This model of the turret is straight. Uh, some of the others that I've done, that turret is a little bit at an angle. I don't try to stick them out the side because I don't want that barrel protruding off of the base uh, footprint. Um, my command units, I use bigger bases so they get a more variety in what I can do and those do have some of the turrets turned a little bit more. But anyway, so that's my basic uh, tips on how to paint 6mm modern uh, models, tanks, uh, or vehicles. These should work for most vehicles as well. Infantry, I haven't done that yet. It's on my list. I've got some ordered, so I'll be trying my hand at that. And I might put some videos together to talk about the process for that as well. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. And thanks for watching.